everybody glory to God hallelujah let's clap our hands for Jesus glory to God thank you Lord yes praise him he said if two or three are gathered in my name hallelujah he would be in the midst glory to God and we thank God because we know that he is in the midst of us on this evening glory to God Lord we just want to praise and magnify your holy name oh God for blessing us to come together one more time God to lift up your precious holy name oh God Lord we just want to thank you for keeping us comforting us God carrying us through this day God bringing us back together one more time Lord we ask that you have your way in this service on tonight move by your precious spirit oh God have your way with each and every individual in this place on tonight Lord we ask that you anoint the man of God afresh to preach your word on tonight God ask that you bless every song God every testimony father God Lord we know that you know the needs of your people on tonight and Lord we are open and ready to receive your word oh God Lord we just want to thank you ask that you bless those that may be on their way to make it here safe and sound father God and Lord have your way do your will on tonight God in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord we give you all the glory all the praise in Jesus mighty name let the church say amen hallelujah clap your hands for Jesus as we get a song on this evening hallelujah joy bells keep ringing in my soul oh yeah joy bells keep ringing in my soul joy Down. 
bells, your bells keep ringing in my soul. Hallelujah. Anybody got joy bells ringing in their soul on tonight? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Joy bells, hallelujah, keeps ringing in my soul. Thank you, Jesus, keeps ringing in my soul. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for that song on tonight. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our Apostle Herman L. Murray and Lady Danielle, our overseers on tonight. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a praise for our leaders here at Garland Number 2, Pastor Demas and First Lady Demas. Glory to God. We thank God for all our leaders. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to move on into the service, and we're going to open up the floor for testimonies on tonight. Give your testimony to the glory and honor of God. Amen. Go ahead and tell your testimony, Sister Keisha. teaching in my living room. I'm just excited about what God is doing, not only in my life, but in the life of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I just, hallelujah. Huh, hallelujah. Yeah. I, hallelujah. Yeah. I just thank God for his goodness. I just thank God for keeping me from day to day, for t protecting me from danger seen and unseen, and just being mindful of me. I just thank God because I was just thinking yesterday how God has brought me a mighty long way. I didn't think I could make it this far, but I thank God. And he just keeps me. And I just thank God because it's an honor and a privilege to be saved. It's an honor and a privilege to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to talk to God. He hears me when I pray. I can be like Jesus and say, Father, I know you hear me when I pray. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for everything, for bringing my mother out. I thank God for what he's doing in Pastor Demon's life. I see him walking, and it just excites me. And I just thank God for what he's doing in Sister Haynes' life. I'm just the saints Ooh, of God. Yes, God. I just know God is on the move. You can feel it. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's a shift in the yeah. spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And God is doing my, mighty, magnificent things. Hallelujah. We just got to stay tuned, saints. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I just thank God. I'm going to take up the time. I just thank God for his goodness. And I just ask the saints to pray for me. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord for that testimony. Glory to God. God is a keeper, amen. He's raising his people up, amen, from sickness and disease. He's raising us up, amen. And we glorify God for that. He is a keeper. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that testimony. Thank you, Sister Keisha. Go ahead and tell your testimony, Sister Haynes. Oh, praise, the Lord. Lord. praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God on tonight. I do give honor to God tonight. Jesus Christ ahead of my life. I thank God for Apostle Murray, our leaders, and uh, First Lady Danielle, praise God, and Pastor Demas, and First yes. Lady Demas, yes. to everyone that's in the house of the Lord on tonight. I do praise and I magnify God for blessing me to be back out into the house of prayer. But most of all, I thank and praise God because he came into my life one day. Yes. Save my soul, sanctify me, and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I'm just appreciating God for that on tonight. I, I ain't going to take a lot of time, but I praise and I magnify God for being a healer in my body. You know, I'm not hallelujah where I want to be, but I'm sure not where I was. Yes. My God. You, I tell you, I praise and I magnify God. The enemy was really attacking me in my body. And, I give God the glory and honor now because I'm doing so much better. I mean, I could barely walk, barely get around, praise God. Then I fell down two times, sprained both of my ankles. Mm. My God, I was in pain and torture. But my mind was made up. Hallelujah, praise God. As long as I could press down the pedals, hallelujah, on my car, hallelujah, I was going to be in the house of the Lord. And I just thank and I praise God for that. You know, I was they were trying to find out what's going on with me and everything, and I was glad for that, messing with the doctors because they were running all these tests and taking all this blood from me, and I told that doctor, I said, you owe me some money, all this blood you taking. I said, they used to pay people for this, taking this much blood, but I think and I praise God, hallelujah, that that's over and done with, yes, and they come to a conclusion about it, praise God, but I know Jesus has, yes. hallelujah, Jesus has the 
a solution. And I'm just waiting, praise God, for that great day. Hallelujah. When I can just take off running around the church one more time again. I'm, I'm walking better than I was, but I'm waiting to run. Anybody want to run on the night? Hallelujah. And give God the glory and the honor and the praises. I'm so glad to be saved on tonight. You just don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You know, he's been a keeper, my God. He brought me from a mighty long way. They sing the song, you know, I'm still here, holding on, praise God. Say, when I was young, there was a lot of them that started out with me. Hallelujah. But they gone astray a lot of them, but hallelujah, I'm still holding on. And I asked the praying ones to remember me. Amen. Praise. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember that song. Mama used to walk around the house singing that song. They started out with me. Hallelujah. But some are gone and stray, but I'm still holding on. Thank you, Jesus, to his hand. Glory to God. I magnify God today for being saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Hallelujah. And I have a fire in the inside of me today. I'm, I want to go on to be with the Lord. Amen. I want to be with him. When, when he called my name, I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. And until then, we're going to keep on running, Pastor Demas. We're going to keep on moving in God. Amen. And I glorify him. I made it to 47 years old. Hallelujah. And you know what? I did not. And I'm going to be honest. There was times in my life where the enemy tried to fight me to make me think I was not going to make it to that, to see my birthday on uh, 47. Amen. But look at God. Hallelujah. He's a keeper. And I thank God for giving me life on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise for all the testimonies. We're going to go ahead and move along in the service. Amen. And we're going to turn it over. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We owe the Lord some praise. Praise.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We owe the Lord a praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to move further into the service. Amen. And we're going to get the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's give a hand for uh, Pastor Demas on this evening as I turn it over into his hands. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I appreciate God once again. Amen. I do honor my heavenly father. Amen. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do honor the Holy Spirit of God. I do honor the apostle Herman L. Murray, First Lady Danielle. Amen. I do honor my own First Lady, First Lady Demas. Amen. Minister Banks and Evangelist Banks and each and every one of you. Amen. Make up the household of faith. Amen. We are very few in numbers, but the Bible said we're two or three. Amen. You ain't, you ain't got to have a whole lot of people to have church. Right. Amen. You just got to have a few. Yeah. Amen. That's willing to put in 100%. Amen. Amen. And I appreciate it. Amen. I appreciate God blessing me with another great opportunity. You may be oh, seated. Yeah. Amen. With another great opportunity to preach the word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. I hope someone was blessed this morning. We had a good time oh, yeah. this morning. Amen. And I thank God, amen, because, you know, I want to be used of God. Yes. I want God, I want to be that mouthpiece for God yes, where people can consider their ways, amen. There's one thing about shouting and speaking in tongues, but there's another way where you sit back and say, hmm, yes. maybe he's right, yes. amen. Yes. Get ready, you know, uh, consider the change in that old life, yes. amen, doing better for Christ. This is what we ought to do. My desire is to live for him. Amen. And everything that he want me to do, amen, I want to do it. Amen. I don't care what it is. Amen. You know, I, we was raised up, my wife and I, we was raised up, you know, she cleaning the bathrooms, I'm cleaning bathrooms, I'm doing the churchyard, I'm doing whatever it takes because I want to do it for the Lord. I wasn't doing it for man, I was doing it for Jesus because Jesus said, come in my vineyard and work. Amen. Now, we're going to talk about something this evening. I'm not going to try to be before you too long. Amen. I'm going to talk about a call to separation. Amen. A call to separation. Don't you know, being a child of God, we have to separate ourselves from all ungodly allowances, alliances and un uh, ungodly relationships and friendships. We got to let it go. Amen. Because if we don't, we'll find ourselves drifting away from God. God called us to separate ourselves from this world, not just with individuals. You know, if we have a job that is a hindrance to our, 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 our uh, wanting to do for Christ, we need to ask God to give us another one. You know he'll do it. Hey Amen. I was working at, a, I believe it was General Cable some years ago. That's when I first got born again. I was so excited about the word of God. I wanted to be at church. I was working on second shift. So the time I was coming to church <clears throat> on Sundays. And I asked God to fix that situation for me. Next thing you know, I was on third shift. I said, this ain't going to work. This ain't what I was talking about. <laughs> I said, what done happen? I said, this the devil. So I kept praying and asking God. I said, Lord, you know I want to be in the service. You know I want to hear the preaching of the gospel. You know I want to do for you. And then they made up three different positions. Utility process operator. And they came to me and said, Mr. Demas, you can pick any ship. I said, first. I ain't give him time. He said, well, I'll see you Monday morning. I said, yes, sir, you will. I was like that man that got healed when he when he, when, when he raised up, he was lame all his life. And Peter and John prayed for him, and the power of God raised him up. I was just like that, man. I was leaping and jumping out that job. They probably thought I was crazy. But I was thanking God for what he's done. God, you know, God will fix any situation. If you have a desire to be a part of this great ministry, this great work, God will make a way for you. Amen. But you've got to separate yourself. Amen. You can't be a a believer in Christ 
and still have that old ragged friendship you used to have with your buddies and your, your homies and your homegirls and all that stuff. Amen. You got to let that stuff go. And if you really got born again, you ain't really got to do nothing because they're going to leave you. Amen. They'll see a difference in your life. And if they don't want to get born again, they don't want no parts of it. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles, amen, with me to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. And we're going to begin at the 14th verse. That's 2 Corinthians. It's the 6th chapter, I believe. And I want you to listen. Because this is something that we have to do as believers in Christ. God said, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. And he said, I will receive you. That's what God said. But first you got to come out. The first thing, the call that God has for our lives, the first calling that God has for our lives is to come out. That's the first calling. God has to bring us out of this ungodly world. Amen. If we're going to get focused on the things of God. Amen. You may listen. This has been my friend for 20 years. We've been friends since we were three. Well, if you say and he ain't saved, listen, you got to separate yourself. If he have no desire to get saved. You know, when I first called myself, I think I was. I think it was back in the late 80s. I called myself getting saved. And I had a friend that we've been friends a long time, you know, and I wanted to, you know, tell him about what the Lord had done for me. You know, I kept going over to his house. Next thing you know, I was drinking beer with him, too. And you know what he said? I thought you were saved. That told me up because I failed God. The next thing you know, I was back in that world. But I wasn't serious then because in 1995, he saved me for real. <laughs> uh, there's been a change. There was a change in my life. Listen, I had no desires to be around nobody that was not saved. And if, they, if I do have an opportunity to witness, I'm going to witness to them, then I got to go. That's how you do that. You don't stay around and hang around because, you know, it's in our nature to lean to the wrong side of ourselves. It's just how it is. If we stay around wrong for a while, you know, if we stay around ungodly people, we become what we hang around the most. We got to join ourselves. See, didn't nobody tell me these things the first time. When you get born again, you got to join yourself to godly people that you may grow. You a babe in Christ. You have to be nourished. You have to be taught. You have to be talked to. You have to be strengthened. So you, you, uh, uh, you engage yourself with godly people so they can help you. Somebody that have been through the fire. They've been, in this, they've been in this warfare for a long time. They can tell you how to defeat the enemy. And then you come to church, you see. You know, I had a preacher told me, he said, don't burn yourself out. I didn't understand that back then. But when I got born again, I said, that's one of the greatest things a preacher can tell somebody. Don't burn yourself out. How are you going to burn yourself out? You know, if you get bored with church, you ain't been born again. Since I got born again in 1995, I ain't never been bored with church. It's, beginning, it's, it's more exciting and sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Amen. And I love it. I love this work. I love this way of life. Amen. I'm trying to see Jesus. Amen. That's what I want to see. So I don't, you know, my wife used to tell me, you need to get you some friends. That's what you tell me. I was a homebody. I stayed at home a lot. You need to get you some friends. I said, I got one. I got you. You need some other friends. I'm like, say, you almost, you, you could almost hurt my feelings by saying that. But, you know, that's just how I was. I, I didn't go nowhere. You know, I, like everything I went to the store, or we go somewhere together, and that's about it. And then she said, you need to get you some friends. I was like, okay, maybe the Lord will bless me with some friends. And he did. I got some good friends now. Amen. And I thank God. Some men of God. Amen. That love the Lord just like I do. Amen. And I thank God for that. 
Amen. It's, it's, it's a wonderful lie. God will give you exactly. And, and the, some of these men of God I need in my life. Amen. I'm 57 years old. But there's some men of God that I need in my life. And one of the men of God, it, it hurts me to my heart. He passed away today. Yesterday. Amen. And we was talking about doing a revival. Pastor Smith. Amen. It hurt. It hurts me to my heart. Amen. I love that man. He was like a father to me and my wife. Amen. When everybody turned their backs on us, he was still right there beside us. Amen. And I thank God for that man. I show. Whew, I'm trying to hold myself together because I love that man. Amen. You talking about wisdom. That man had it. Amen. You talking about preaching the gospel. I don't know if anybody. I, that man can preach the gospel. Amen. He was over there in Mount Pleasant. He was country. I'm talking about country. He, he hit them words and you know how you cut words short. You know he, when people say the spirit of discernment, he said spirit of discernment. He just cut it short. But you know what exactly what he was talking about. Amen. And you talking about preaching the word. That man. I remember we was up in front of the tent. That man be preaching so hard, he turn around, do the splits, and come back up. I said, I said, this man preaching. I'm telling you, that, that, was, that was a true man of God. Amen. And he's gone. And, you know, he, he had a lot of illnesses in his body. And, you know, the fact that he passed, it hurts, but it's to be expected. Because these old bodies, you know, man, ever since Adam sinned against God, you know, these bodies were supposed to last forever. But since Adam sinned against God Almighty, they don't do it. They're subject to sickness, illness, diseases, all of it. Amen. But God is a keeper. And when he's through, he'll take you on home. And God was finished. He finished his course. He ran his race. And he finished it. And he won. He got the victory. You see, now he, 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 he got the fullness of the victory. All that spiritual warfare that he's fighting. It's over now. He won. Amen. So I have something to be excited about. I, I'm going to miss him. Amen. I was, me and my wife were supposed to go see him, but we didn't get the opportunity to see him. And then when I heard that he passed, it really hurt me to my heart. I wanted to see him one more time. Amen. But I have my memories, fond memories of him. Amen. When we talk on the, we talk on the phone, you got to plug that cell phone up because he's going to kill it. He's going to kill it, I'll tell you. So you better have a charger next to you. Amen. To keep that phone having some life in it. Amen. But I appreciate God for the man of God that he has put in my life. Amen. I have learned so much uh, uh, from him alone. And I'm learning so much for the men of God that I know now. Amen. And I appreciate all of them. I appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. Let me go ahead and read the scripture. The sixth chapter, I would believe we be beginning at the 14th verse, I believe. Amen. All right. These eyes ain't no, you know, I'm thinking I'm in the sixth chapter, I'm in the eighth. All right, here we are. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what commune have light with darkness? Darkness and light cannot dwell in the same room. When the lights come on, darkness has to leave. And when the light go off, then darkness come back in. They cannot dwell together in the same place. And when you get born again, we are children of light. And what fellowship do we have with children of darkness? I really can't understand a child of God calling themselves a child of God. But you have friends that deal drugs. You have friends that fornicate. You have friends that commit adultery. You have friends that lie, steep, cheat, and steal. But you call yourself a child of God. Light has no fellowship with darkness. Righteousness have no fellowship with unrighteousness. 
And if you're born again, that's just simply how it is. Because God comes in and he changes the nature that we was born with. He gives a, he put the new man in us. And the new man, only thing that excites the new man is the things of God. So we as people of God, that's why Paul said, examine yourself. We got to look at ourselves all the time and see if we're still in the faith. We have to be careful for nothing because Satan is very subtle in his attack. He just chips away. You know, if you get a, a chisel and a hammer and you chip away at a boulder, it may not in the beginning, it may not look like you're doing anything. But you keep on chipping and eventually you'll crack it. And see, that's the tactic of the enemy. He may just chip away and chip away. And it may not seem like nothing. But when you stop fasting, when you stop praying, when you stop seeking God, now he's making an impact on your life to revert you back from what God had brought you out of. Why would you go back in that world after God done brought you out? Why would you go back to lying, stealing, and cheating when God done brought you out? Why would you go back to the things of that world when God done brought you out? Because the Bible said that them devils look for dry places. See, the Bible said when you have the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Bible said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And devils can't swim. That's why when Jesus cast those devils out, they, they said, listen, let's go in the swines. And them swines ran into that river and they drowned themselves. Them devils had to go because they can't swim. So they look for dry places. And when we have slacked in our praying and fasting and seeking God in our studying, being that child of God, then the devil comes back and checks and when he see that the place has been, the Bible said, garnished and swept and cleaned. But notice there's no river flowing. Then the Bible said he'll go back and get seven more demons worse than him. And then he'll enter back in. And you become a worse person, you see. And everybody that backslide don't come back all the time. It's sometimes it's just simply by the grace of God if you backslid and God brought you back. You see, there's so much that we're up against, but God has given us the power. God has given us the ability to overcome all the attacks of the enemy. So there's no reason for us to fail God. There's no reason for us to backslide on God. Because if we do what this Bible says, we don't have no fellowship with unrighteousness. We don't have no fellowship with the children of the devil. Witness to him is one thing. But when you get through witnessing to them, go on about your business. You're done. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be here for an example. We're supposed to be here to reach the law. We're supposed to hear the birth Christ that's in us into somebody else. But we got to be wise when we do it. We can't hang around them. I'm not going out to eat with none of my old friends. I ain't got no, I ain't got no desire to go out and eat with them. But if they want to talk about the Lord, if they want their lives to be changed, I'm more than willing to meet them. And talk to them and tell them about the goodness of the Lord. You know how I used to be. You was there with me. I was doing some of the same dirt that you was doing. But I've been changed. God is real. And he's the only one who can change that bad man into a good man. And this is what we have to understand. God's the only one to have that type of power, you see. And I can tell you what God has done for me. But that's all I'm going to do. Are we going to start hanging out? Oh, no. We're not going to start hanging out. We're not friends. We're enemies because you are not a, you are an unbeliever. Every unbeliever is an enemy of the child of God. I don't care if it's your mother or your father. You got to be careful. Blood is thicker than water. Listen, that sounds good, but it ain't. You see, I don't care. I, listen, I have a brother. I love that boy. He has nothing but respect for me and my wife. I don't hang around him. He's an unbeliever. He's an enemy of God. And if he's an enemy of God, he's my enemy. There's nothing in the world he wouldn't do for me. And there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for him. 
but I'm not going to hang around him. You know why? You can put a, a good apple in a bowl of bad apples. Them good, that one good apple ain't going to convert them bad apples. But that bad apple is going to make that good apple bad. And that's the way it happens. Even if you start hanging around unbelievers, you know what you're going to do? You're going to revert back to type. We're not supposed to hang. That's why God said have no fellowship with them. I don't care how much of the Holy Ghost that you have. You quench the spirit by doing such things. And the Bible said quench not the spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't going to lead you to that. Now, if there's a word that he wants to give you to, uh, 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 that they may receive it, then he'll do that. But after that, the Holy Ghost is going to bring you on out because he don't want you there. And this is what we have to understand. There's so much that we have to understand about the word of God and what God uh, 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 desires of his people. He desires us to, excuse me, us to be holy. You have you ever seen a uh, 57-year-old man got hiccups? I don't know how it came. It just started coming. I hiccup a lot. I don't know what that's about. But nevertheless, y'all excuse me. Amen. But we got to be exactly what God has called us to be. And we have to be that to the T. We have to learn this. And it's a process of learning until God take us home. And we have to be willing to allow God to do the Holy Spirit to do what he has called has, has come to do in our lives. He has called us. Everybody he's called. He calls them to bring them out first. He calls them to come out. We're going to finish reading. Let's see where I'm at. All right. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, and will I, and walk in and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, God said. And be ye separate, said the Lord. And much not the unclean, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. What have God have part with an infidel? You know what an infidel is? Somebody that don't believe God. An infidel. And you have a lot of those people in the church. You got a lot of people that go in the church. They go to church, been going to church for years. They don't really believe God. They're infidels. Why? Because they don't obey God to the fullest. If you don't obey God to the fullest, then you're an infidel. You see. You don't believe God. How can you not believe God after he done done certain things in your life? God has made himself real to me. Amen. Many years ago. And he still continues to make himself real. Amen. He made himself real to me when he healed my foot. He made himself real one more time. And you know what? I thanked him for it. Because they were talking about chopping, cutting. And you know once they get to cutting, they won't stop till they get to the knee. Oh, we're going to have it. He didn't even look at it good. He just said, we're going to have to cut this off. Well, wait a minute. You ain't really looked at it. And then he said, we're going to try something. And I talked to the Lord, I'm telling you. But see, you got to get yourself in a position where God can hear you. And the first thing you do is to separate yourself. Sometimes you got to be alone with God. You got to cut the cell phones off. You got to cut the TV off. If you're married, honey, why don't you go in there and, and, and do something? She tells me all the time, you know, you know I, I, I need, why don't you go in there? And, hey, woman, don't be trying to get rid of me. But I understand what she's trying to do. Some, most of the time I come here. When she go to work, I come here because it's just better here. You see, you can be at home, but it's, it's better here at church. So I come down here. Amen. And you know one thing about this old toe? Not one time did it hurt. I did not suffer no pain. And the way it looked like, it looked like it would be aching because it was swollen. It was big, and you thought it would be aching. Not one time did I suffer any pain. God is a wonderful God. I keep telling it because, you know, I love it. 
I love the fact that God hears me. You know why? Because I separated myself from that world. I know I can get into a place where I can get alone and God can hear me. See, when you want to talk to God, you got to get alone. You can't talk to God in the midst of all kinds of chaos. Amen. You got to get alone with God. You got to learn how to separate yourself. Amen. From this world, not just from different friends and family. You got to learn how to separate yourself to get in contact with God. Amen. We got to get in contact with God. We got to be alone with God. If we're going to know him on an intimate base, we got to be alone with him. It's just like a, a, a married couple. They just got married. If that marriage is going to grow, you got to spend time with one another. Amen. Why you, you, you these Hollywood actors, they both of them actors, they done just got married. One's on the other side of town, the other one's on the other side of town because they're making a movie and all this stuff. Listen, that's why they don't last long. That's why they change wife like they change wife and husband like they change shoes. Amen. Because they're not spending no time together. To make a relationship work and make a relationship grow, you have to spend time. Amen. And you don't have to spend much time. You got to learn one another. I had to learn what, uh, what this woman liked and what she did not like. You know, it was a bunch of trials and errors, but it worked out just fine. Amen. Amen. You can't learn without failing. Don't never be afraid to fail. When you fail, just learn from your failure. You know, when, when sometimes something happens, I asked God, I said, God, what did I do? And how can you teach me out of this situation? Amen. Because it's always a learning process in everything that we do. You see, if you want to become wise, hang around wise people. You see, so that whatever he say, I can learn what he learned, what he know, and I can become a wiser person. You see, amen. The, uh, the men of God that I be around with, they, they, they pretty wise. One of them so sharp is ridiculous. I sit up there and listen to that young man. I, I shake my head. I know that's God. Sometimes I say, listen, I'm 57 years old. He say so. <laughs> you have to remind listen, I'm older than you. He don't care. But I, I love it because the man is so wise. It's just, it, I know it's God. And see, I'm not, I'm not that type of person. I can learn from somebody that's younger than me. I look at that young man back there. He got this stuff looking professional. I don't know how to do that. I asked him. He explained to me. I just shake my head. I'm like, well, whatever. Just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. But he has everything looking right and professional. Amen. And he tells me I, I learned from him. Amen. I learned from that young man. He, I think I got him about 10 years. I got him. How old are you, young man? 36? 37. I got him about 20 here. Man, I got him. <laughs> but he teaches me things. See, when you teachable, it doesn't matter who you're learning from. That's, right. that's, right. that's, right. that's how you grow and that's how you mature. That's how you become wiser. I don't have, listen, that old young whippersnapper, he can't tell me nothing. Yes, he can. That little old thing right there can show you something. She ain't knowing you. She's showing it to you, but you can learn something from a baby. And what is that? A baby don't stay angry at nobody. I don't care how you mistreat that child. Don't stay angry. That's what you can learn. You know, we grown folks, we, you know, we have a tendency to hold grudges. You see, you can't do that. You got to separate yourself. Amen. And when you separate yourself, you don't hold grudges. You don't keep, you don't stay angry. The Bible said be angry but sin not. There's nothing wrong with you because there's a lot of times in this life that you're going to get upset. Don't think you're a child of God you can't get angry. God said be angry but sin not. How you going to react when you get angry? And what you going to do after you get angry? You got to still act like a child of God. That's how you change lives. They know that you, you got folks that will provoke you on purpose because you're a child of God. They just want to get a reaction out of you. That's all the devil is doing. They want, he want to get a reaction out of you. It takes a lifetime to build up this reputation for Christ, but it takes just a moment to destroy it. 
Because what you do wrong, people will hang it over your head for years. Now, God will forgive you. But we got to have that same mind that God has. He said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to forgive and not even remember it. And I know it's hard sometimes because some people can do you wrong. That's why you got to be born again. That's why you got to say that's why you got to fast. And the only way we can't get rid of it because we're still in the flesh. The flesh still is active in our lives because if the flesh is dead, then that situation is dead. Even though it may make you angry, but you'll let it go. That's why he tells us to be like little children. Amen. You can go over there and make old, 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 old big baby cry. Because you done made him mad. Mess around and get him a sandwich, he's going to be all right. <laughs> he's going to come to you and everything. You're going to be his friend until he get finished with that sandwich and he's going to want to leave you alone. But see, we got to be like Christ. Christ came into this world. They talked about him. They hit him. They spit on him. They called him the devil. And he didn't do nothing against them but what he was supposed to do, deliver us from our sin. He died for us crucified them thorns that they put on his head I think they were about two inches long and they pressed it down on his head the things that he suffered for you and I we should be able to be willing to suffer just like he suffered see after a while it's coming to a point now where, where the, the pressure is going to be put on the church amen and it's happening right now Amen. I believe that they're stopping people from putting up churches now so much because there's so many churches all over the place. And then have a lot of these churches not of God. Then you got people that are confused what to believe. That's why we got to live this life before men. Let our light shine, the Bible says. And the only way we're going to let our light shine is that we come out of that darkness and allow God to put that light in us. That when we step around darkness, then that darkness is removed. You see, because darkness can't be around light. When light comes, darkness has to go. When we turn these lights on, it was dark in here when I came in here. When I flicked these lights on, darkness removed itself immediately. And that's how it is. It's supposed to be what the child of God. We're supposed to have such an impact on this world that when we step in front of them, listen, they know that we're a child of God. Devil fears us. Why do you think he's always trying to attack us? Trying to attack our bodies. Listen, God will allow Satan to attack our body. He did it with Job. He knew Job was ready for such an attack. And when he attacks us like he does, what it does, when God comes and delivers us, what does it do? It increases our faith in Christ Jesus. That's why God allows such things. You don't have to wonder why always, you know, why bad things always happen to good people. Cut that stuff out. Jesus said in his word, arm yourself to suffer. He said, through much trials and tribulations, you shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. We're going to go through. But we're going through for a purpose and for a reason. To make us strong in Christ. To, to increase our faith in Christ. Listen, we're going to get to a point where any time the devil attack us don't mean nothing because we'll attack him back with the word. You can't fight him with your hands because he's a spirit. But you can fight him with the sword of the spirit. He attack you. You talk to that devil. Uh, I, I, I believe one, a few times my wife, she was in there praying. She opened up that door told that devil to get out. Sometimes you got to talk to him. You got to rebuke that devil. That's why you read that word of God. Every man of God, when they face the devil, what they do? They rebuke them. Michael, when they disputed over the body of Moses, he said, the Bible said, he dare not bring a railing accusation, but he said, the Lord, the Lord rebuked thee. That was more powerful than anything. He tried, what you think he wanted the body of Moses for? To deceive people. Make Moses look like something that he's not. Oh, yeah, he'll try, he was going to try to get, he wanted that body. But Michael wouldn't allow him to have it. And Michael didn't live not one sword 
He said, the Lord rebuked thee. And that's what we got to do. When the devil comes in, the Lord rebuked thee. But you have to separate yourself to receive that kind of power. You just can't say that you ain't got no power. He's going to laugh at you and tear you asunder. But when you got that power of the Holy Ghost, when you say the Lord rebuke you, it's not you talking. It's God that's talking. And he can't do nothing but obey God. You think Jesus had to go down there and fight Satan for the keys of death and hell? No. I'm going to tell you that devil bowed down and handed him up. Gave it to him. Jesus didn't have to fight. Why you think when, 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 when that man, he was possessed with, with a legion of demons in him. And what they run to Jesus. Jesus didn't run to them. They came to Jesus. And bowed down and worshiped. And said, have you come to torment us before our time? Don't you think devil, that devil is a bad something? He ain't nothing. He's something, he's something more than that natural man. Because he's supernatural. But when we have the power of the Holy Ghost in us. Then we become supernatural. Our power is greater than his. He has to obey us just like he had to obey God. And see, he wants us to think that. He want, that's why he is a deceiver. He wants you to think that he has great power. He don't have no great power. His power is very limited. And the only power he has is over that natural man. Because when we get the power of God, when we get born again, we get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, he has no power over us. He has no power to make us do nothing. You see, if we mess up, that's simply because we chose to step out of the will of God. But when we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us, he can't attack us. He can't do nothing to us. Amen. He blessed my sister here wonderfully. Amen. Look at it. Just sitting there like ain't nothing ever happened. Amen. And I thank God for it. I missed it. I said, what's going on? I almost had to get her. But she talked to my wife. That saved her. Because I, I told, I told uh, Mrs. Banks, I'm coming after your wife. She ain't told me nothing. I don't know what's going on. But she talked to my wife. She told me, I talked to your wife. You did. I said, woman, you just got saved. Because I was coming after you. I needed to know what was going on with my sister. I ain't seen her. I ain't used to her missing. Amen. But I thank God. Amen. Look how Lord bless her. She got a wonderful testimony. Amen. We both got great testimony. Amen. Lord saved my foot and Lord healed her body. Because I'm telling you, them doctors don't mind chopping nothing off. Amen. Walking around here with a cut off toe. Two of them. No, I can't do that. I mean, if I have to, I would. But I know God is well able. And I appreciate him. But I thank God for this life of separation. And this is what we have to understand as people of God. We cannot be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Now, if you married, already been married, and you get saved and your spouse is not, then God can fix that situation. But if you are a saved man or woman of God and you turn around and marry somebody that's not saved, you're going to pay a price. I'm telling you now because you just, just totally disregard and disobeyed the word of God. He said, don't do it. You take Samson. That man was a Nazarene from his birth. No razor touched his head. And they, they you know, they tell him, you marry out your own family, not your immediate family, but, you know, your kindred. He wants to marry this woman, Delilah. And Delilah means what? To bring low. And he should have known something because she wanted to know the secret of his strength. And he'll tell her a lie. And she'll call the Philistines in. You know, lust will blind you. Now, every time he told her something and it wasn't true, she called the Philistines in to correct, to, to get them, to bind them. And finally, he said, the strength is in my hair. She put him to sleep and went snipping away. And when they came in, he said, I'm going to shake myself like I always do. See, the Holy Spirit will come in with a shout, but it'll leave ever so quietly. You think you still got it. He said, I'll shake myself like always, but he didn't have no power, and he was bound. 
But you know how they, they had him bound and made sport of him? As he was going around that thing, the Bible said, how be it, his hair began to grow. He repented. He was repenting his way back. You see, it's amazing that you find that his strength was in his hair and you didn't keep his hair cut. You let it grow back. These are different men of God that had unholy alliance with unbelievers and they paid a price. His hair grew back, but he paid a price with his life because of his disobedience. Disobedience will destroy you. And this is what we have to understand. When God said come out, he means come out. He, don't, he told Abraham, listen, you come out of, uh, amongst your people, amongst your kindred, and out of your father's house. And you know what he did? He brought his father with him. Until his father died off, God, he didn't hear from God no more. But when his father died off, then God spoke to him again. God don't play. He don't care who it is. He said, come out. And he means come out. It doesn't matter. Listen, it's your mother, your father. They not say, oh, you go visit your mother and father. But when they get to talking crazy, you leave. You don't disrespect them. The Bible said, honor your mother and your father. It's, it's, it's talking about those that are not saved, too. That's your mother and your father. You don't disrespect your mother and your father. You don't do that. It's disrespect when you call your mother and your father by their first name. None of my children call me by my first name. I ain't never heard of them. They may have, but I ain't never heard of them. And I ain't never called my mother or my father when he was alive by his first name. We have the same name. He's the second, I'm the third. My son's the fourth. Amen. And, and I don't show my, I didn't show my father no disrespect. And my father, he wasn't no father. He was never around. But when God had blessed us to become friends toward the last two years of his life, and I thank God for the friendship that we had. Amen. But I never disrespect him, even though he was wrong. I never disrespect my mama. She thinks she can whoop me now. And she, was she 80 something? 79. 79, 78, 79. How, you, how can you whoop me? Woman, you can't whoop me, but she thinks she can. And she'll try it. She love her. She get talking, looking at me funny. I bag up to that door and unlock them six locks you got on that door. <laughs> I ain't never seen, she in the park, but how you get all these locks on these doors? But see, when we go visit, I make sure all them locks is unlocked. I lock one. So when she get ready to get me, I just boom. And go on out, wait on Kim. But, you know, I love my mama. Amen. I never, when you love somebody, you won't disrespect them. You don't, you disrespect somebody, you don't love them. I sit up there and cuss my mama out. I don't love my mama. Ain't no way in this world I love my mama. But we as people of God, you got to forgive. Ooh, you got to be, you got to, listen, we're going to get tested. I'm telling you, we're going to get tested. And we're going to get tested in our forgiveness. Amen. Because some people can do you wrong. But you've got to forgive them. And some of these things, listen, this kind can only happen by fasting and praying. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. Forgiveness is not an easy thing. But we have to do it as men and women of God. Because God said, if you can't forgive your brother, your sister, he said, I won't forgive you before the father. This is a matter of life and death. Everything hangs in the balance. Amen. And we got to make sure we're doing everything right. And the first thing we have to do in order to forget these things right is we have to come out. Come out from among them. That God may deal with us. Change our hearts. He'll deal with us. If we get along with him, he'll make us what he wants us to be. But we got to spend time with Jesus. We got to give him time. Amen. If you got, excuse me, if you got a busy schedule, amen, you better find a way to make it to the point where you can spend some time with the Lord. 
Amen. Because if, if you're too busy to spend time with Jesus, then you're too busy. And it's going to cost you. Amen. And God will give us the desires of our heart. If our desire is what he desires. And this is what we have to understand. If we desire what God desires, then God will give it to us. You see. And we desire to be with him. He's going to make himself real. He's going to do it, saints of God. Amen. God has been coming in this place blessing us. He's been blessing us tremendously. I mean, I'm waiting for this move of God. I, wanna, I want the Holy Spirit to come in here that we see a physical cloud in this place. I'm telling you, don't you know he can do it? Amen. I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to come in here and we be so drunk in the spirit. Amen. It might be the next morning before we, come, we get conscious. You see? I'm telling you, I'm waiting for that. I know it's going to happen. Amen. All we got to do is stay faithful to him. Amen. Love one another like this Bible says. Amen. And separate ourselves from that world that he may come in and fellowship with us. He may come in and show us things, reveal himself to us. And then one of these days, I'm telling you, I, 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 I believe that God is going to move in a mighty way like we ain't never experienced before. I believe he's going to do it. Amen. I have that much faith. I have that much confidence that God is going to do it. Amen. I'm talking about in this church. I believe if everybody come on one accord like on the day of Pentecost, uh, they was in that upper room for 10 days fasting and praying. It took them 10 days to get that mind as one. And then when it happened, God didn't waste no time. The Bible says suddenly. I mean, God didn't waste no time. He didn't give nobody time to drift nowhere else. He moved in immediately. And God moved as a mighty rushing wind. I want that kind. Listen, if the wind blows, if the cloud comes, I don't care how it happens, I want it to happen. You see, I want God to move in this place to a little baby like that speaking in tongues. God will do it, you hear me? God will do it. He's still the same God. He said, I am the Lord thy God. And I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. God will still move just like that. He's just looking for some people that he can move through. <laughs> That's what he's looking for. I believe this church, Full Gospel Holy Temple number two, is going to be a lot mighty church. Amen. I just believe it. It's already mighty. Amen. People hearing about us. That's why they're coming out. Amen. Because they heard. And we got to keep up the faith, saints. We got to keep it up. We got to stay holy. Amen. Stay separate ourselves from that world. It's a sad thing. You sitting in here speaking in tongues, then you out there clowning. Oh, that's a sad testimony. You done hit in the cause of Christ, you see, and we can't be like that. We got to be saved 24-7, seven days a week. Amen. We got to give it to Jesus all the time. When you wake up in the morning, amen, talk to him. Somewhere in the middle of the noonday, talk to him. And when you lay down, talk to him. We ought to pray a minimum of three times a day, you see. And if we can, add some more in there. Amen. I remember reading a, a, a true story. And this man, he was seeking God. This man was praying uh, four times a day, seven days a week. And he talked to the Lord and said, Lord, what am I doing wrong? The Lord told him, you ain't even praying enough. And this man praying four times a day. He said, you ain't praying enough. Amen. God requires certain things from each of his believers. You see, some may need more fasting. Some may need more praying. You know, some may need more coming to church. Some may need more studying. If how God deals with you, he's going to deal with you because he know you. And we got to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in us. Amen. And how many want the Lord to use them? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, in the time in which we live it in, it's a wonderful time to be saved. The time in which we live it in is a wonderful time to be a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist. Whatever you are in Christ, it's a wonderful time to be that. Because this world is dark. We're that beacon in the night. Amen. You know, by the ocean, they got that lighthouse. And when it's foggy, that, that, that lighthouse light, it beams through that fog. So when you don't know your sense of direction, 
You can see that lighthouse. <laughs> you know to head that way. That's the dry land. Amen. And when that world is in trouble, we're that beacon in the night. Amen. Where people can come and seek refuge. Amen. This is a house of refuge where people can come and whatever need they have, it can be met. And that's how God wants us to be. The church used to be the saints hospital, saints. You know, that's why a lot of these old folks didn't go to doctors and hospitals because they pray and God will heal them. God can do way more things than a doctor. He's not a doctor. He's a healer. A doctor is not no healer. He just maintains sickness. He prescribes all that medication that make you sick. It'll probably fix this one thing, but it'll make you sick in other ways. All these pills ain't nothing but chemicals you put in your body. We got to get ourselves in a place where God can heal our bodies. Amen. Don't misunderstand me. Ain't nothing wrong going to the doctor. I'll never tell nobody, don't go to the doctor and trust God. I'm going to tell you to trust God and go to the doctor. And when a doctor say, we got to cut your toes off, God ruled by overruling. These folks was amazed because I had diabetes. And a person with diabetes is not supposed to heal like that. They said, you are healing at tremendous rate. Nothing but God. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then next thing you know, he said, listen, you ain't got to come here no more. You can take that boot off, too. He said, just wear a wide shoe. I said, thank you, Lord. And I said, you won't see me no more. He was a nice doctor. I won't see you no more unless it's out in the street somewhere. Amen. He knew we were saved, too. Every time I went without her, he said, where's your wife? I said, she's at work. But she'll be back. She came back. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is a wonderful God. Amen. He's a, he'll, whatever you need, I'm telling you, you got to believe it. He'll fix it. He'll do it. Amen. I go to the doctor because I want him to know that God is real. Because he was just truly amazed at how fast my toe was healing. It looked like it was chewed up and spit out by a dog. And next thing you know, it was just healing and healing. He said, it's healing at a tremendous rate. He said, your sugar must be low. I don't know what my sugar is. Amen. I don't like to poke myself, so I don't too much check it. I check it sometimes, not all the time. I don't like that stick stuff. I'm looking for God to heal me from that, too. I'm looking for God to get me out of that dialysis. I'm looking for God to do just completely heal me. I don't know about you, saying. I'm looking for God to where I can take off running and I ain't getting ready to pass out after four steps. <laughs> you can't pay me to run right now. I'll take off running, Brother Billy, and probably wouldn't even make it to that parking lot without falling over. Amen. But I'm looking for God to do just the simple things I used to do that I took advantage of. Amen. Thinking I can keep doing it for the rest of my days. Amen. But I thank God. He dealt with me. He dealt with me. God uh, blessed me to start appreciating life. Start appreciating the life that he has given me. Amen. When I couldn't dress myself, that's one of the most horrible things there is. When you can't, you're a grown man and you can't dress yourself. I got to wait till when she get off work and bother her after she done work 12, 13 hours. And she got to come in and take care of me. That hurt me to my heart. But I sat back there and I learned from it. And I asked God to forgive me because it was my fault. Because I was killing the sweet nectar. And I had to learn to be obedient. I had to learn to get some willpower and, and, and say, I ain't going to drink that much. The devil tried to kill you. He don't know how he'll kill you. He don't care how he kill you. He's going to kill you. A lot of fluid will kill you. The doctor showed me, that last doctor I had, he showed me of a, a young man who was 24 years old, and he had uh, 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 the same thing I had with his fluid retention. And every time he go into the hospital, they get the fluid off, then he'll go back and drink like he's crazy. He's back in the hospital. And the doctor said, you keep it up, you're going to die. And one day, it caught up with him because he wouldn't listen. And he said, I'm telling you this. Because you're on the same pathway if you don't stop. And the Lord dealt with me. And I changed. I stopped. And I'm still here. 
Amen. By the grace of God. That devil don't care how he destroy you. He want to destroy you. And when he attacks you in such a way, that's because you're a threat to his kingdom. This little church right here is a threat to his kingdom. Amen. Because we always get visitations from the Lord. It's wonderful when the Holy Spirit stops by. Amen. And come in this place. Amen. And Rock Daniel. What does Rock Daniel mean? You know? I don't know. It's a saying. It's a song. Rock Daniel. What is Rock and Daniel? I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit comes in this place, and we have a move of God like we have, People are touched. People are blessed. People came in here and they needed a word. Amen. By the grace of God, they got that word that they needed. Now they can go on. Amen. Keep on going. And I'm praying that God touch their hearts and their minds. Amen. I'm, I'm praying that God will uh, uh, just stir their hearts even more. You remember these people this morning. Amen. Because they came in here and they needed it. Amen. I believe one of uh, the young ladies that was sitting back there, she went to another church. And the church wasn't having service. And she pulled up full gospel, Holy Temple number two. And I think she was way in North Dallas. Amen. And God sent her here. And she received a blessing from the Lord. That young lady right there, she came to hear a word. She didn't want to go to her own church because she needed a word. And she got what she needed. Amen. This young man, I believe God got a calling on his life. And he knew it. And God gave him just exactly what he needed. Amen. And I'm telling you, that is what the church is all about. But you got to separate yourself. In order for God to give them that word, I had to get in a place where he can send that word through me. That's why this is very serious to me. Amen. I want to be used by God. And I'm going to remember them people. Yeah. Amen. I want y'all to keep praying for those people. Yeah. Amen. And whatever God got for you to do, do it. Separate yourself so God can use you. If we separate ourselves and be about our father's business, he'll use us in a mighty way. Amen. And, and, and most of all, let us love one another. Yeah. Amen. When I say I love y'all, I love y'all. I'm telling you, y'all some wonderful people. I love y'all to death. Amen. And my wife does too. We talk about y'all all the time. I said, well, them some wonderful men and women of God. Amen. And I thank God to know y'all. It's a privilege to know y'all. Amen. And it's a privilege to work with y'all in the ministry. Amen. And I believe God going to do a great work because there's a sweet spirit in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of togetherness in this place. Amen. We work together. Amen. I, I ain't never heard one of y'all had no arguments yet. Because I ain't had to come straighten it out. But I believe everybody here get along. And everybody here love one another. Amen. And I appreciate y'all. I just wanted to tell you that. I'll probably tell you again one other, some more times. I don't know. But I love y'all. Amen. And I appreciate y'all. Because y'all don't have to do it. But I thank God for you. And I believe God's going to bless you. Amen. I ain't talking about no new house and fancy cars. I'm talking about with blessings from God. The gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I want. Amen. I want more wisdom, more understanding. I got a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn about pastoring. Amen. Because it's not an easy job. Because you got different personalities. And you got to learn how to deal with these different personalities. But y'all make it so easy. Amen. Y'all don't make it complicated. Not yet. No way. Amen. <laughs> and I believe in y'all. Y'all not going to do it. And I think y'all love me too. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but I thank God for y'all. And I hope something was said that would bless you. Amen. <clears throat> we just have so much to do. We have so much to do for the Lord. And I believe God is going to make this place a house of refuge where people can come and give their life to God. Amen. Amen. If there's any need.